If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. Pump. Happy New Year. Hey, hey, 2018. For the first 22 minutes, Adam, Justin, and myself have our usual introductory conversation. We talk about our New Year's Eve celebrations. I call it the fluffer of the conversation. We talk about Adam's revised New Year's <laughs> resolution. I, ta- I had a take back. He's got a little <laughs> yeah. bit. Poor fella. Uh-huh. We talk about drunk stretching. Uh, believe it or not, it's a good idea. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know about that. I, I enjoy I'm going to franchise it. I if you do, it. do it naked. Yeah. Oh. Uh, also in this episode, we mentioned our sponsor, Organifi. Adam's uh, kind of ill right now. Not in the cool way. If you're from the 90s, <laughs> ill meant you were cool. <laughs> He'd be ill in. Yeah, but yeah. no, he's actually sick. Uh, Trying to double up on my green juice right he, now. He's using Organifi right now to fight the plague. Uh, but we do mention them. They are one of our sponsors. If you use the code MINDPUMP, you'll get 20% off. All you got to do is go to OrganifiShop.com forward slash MINDPUMP and then enter the code MINDPUMP. No space for that discount. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, massages, are they good, bad, or are we indifferent to them? What is the science behind them? Yeah. Besides feeling good, uh, do they actually benefit you in terms of uh, getting your uh, results? The next question, now, you know, Mind Pump, we are experts in fitness, but we like to pretend like we're experts in everything else. Mm -hmm. So we answer the question, what tips do we have for increasing the female Libido. Remember that hashtag Ladywood? Let's <laughs> yes. bring it back. Let's yeah. bring it back. Hashtag Ladywood. The next question was, this individual uh, has a damaged, quote unquote, damaged metabolism. They're following the MAPS program, so they've, they've got one of the steps down. But what else can they do to speed up their metabolism? This is a very frust- frustrating place to be in where you know, you've know you either over-dieted, over-exercised, or both over a period of time. And now- you just gain weight eating more than you know twelve hundred calories or whatever, which is considered damaged metabolism. How do you fix that? Like, how do we get out of that? So we go into depth in this episode about that. And finally, the final question was, why is it that your body sometimes rejects foods that you eat a lot of, even if they're healthy? You know, like nuts, blueberries. What's the deal with that? Vegetables. Like, what's going on? I used to eat broccoli <laughs> Did all the time. you catch his voice like that, too? Yeah, I yeah. This it was very Seinfeld. What? Yeah, what? What's what is going, going on? on? <laughs> uh, why does that happen? We break down the science. Also, we are in the year 2018. It's the beginning of the year. You're probably pretty motivated to getting in shape. You want to either get lean, build muscle. Start the year right. Improve, You're going to go too hard. Improve your movement or, or all of the above. Now, there's a few things that stop people from continuing on. Lots of people get started on fitness uh, in January. We know we manage gyms. On average, a gym will get 20 to 50% more sales and revenue and members in the months of January. And this lasts for like three months, and then it falls off sharply. People just stop. This is very common in the fitness industry. There's a few reasons why people stop. One of the main reasons is people go into this without a detailed plan. Typically, the plan goes something like this. I'm going to start working out, and I'm going to start eating right, and that's it. They have no idea where they're going to go with that. They have no idea you know, how to progress that, how to move out of that. They have no idea how to prevent injury, how to get their body to move through different you know, adaptations, whether they're trying to build strength, endurance, or whatever. And so after a few months... It gets boring or they hurt themselves or they see no progress or they, they don't know how to get any more progress and they stop working out and then they wait till the following year again. So We've got the plan for the entire year. The whole year. So here's the deal. If you enroll in the MAPS Super Bundle, you will have your whole year planned out for you. And it's not just you know a list of exercises or whatever. We break it all down. We have exercise blueprints. Uh, so you know what exercises to do, how many reps to do, how long to rest in between each set, uh, you know how many sets to do, you know the tempo, the control. There's videos in the programs where we are demonstrating and teaching you how to do the exercises like experienced personal trainers know how to. So we know how to give you the right cues because we've trained lots of people. We take you through different workouts. So 
You may be focusing on strength for the next three weeks. Now you're focusing on hypertrophy. Now you're focusing on endurance. Then you're focusing on mobility or functionality. The workouts change throughout the whole year. It's never boring. The best part about this is your body is progressing throughout the entire year. This is the time to get the MAPS Super Bundle. It's the best program you can get started with. It is your plan for 2018 to check it out and to enroll, all you got to do is go to mindpumpmedia.com. We are hot. So, scolding hot. What I wanted to do, and I wait, was waiting until we get the, the mics on, um, is uh, I, Justin, I think yeah. either you or I yeah. need to give Adam a foot massage. A foot massage? Yeah, because his ankle is swollen. Oh, I don't think he wants us touching that one. And he's and yeah, he I don't think so either. And he's, <laughs> and he's got a cold. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and everything. And uh, you know, we got to make yeah. him feel better. I think he needs more we're boys. than a foot massage. Huh? You know what I mean, well, that's as far as I'm going to go. Okay, I don't know what you're going to do. Well, I mean, I'm a team player. You know what I mean? But he's got two feet. Don't there's, fuck with me today. Don't yeah. fuck with me today. See, he's, we're not he's, fucking with you. We're get this like, thing going. It's making yeah. you feel. Let's let's this, oh, we're this, going. This, this is what fucking, we do. Let's get this fucking party started. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're party. I'm bah yeah, up in you're, this place you're right still now. Still hungover. I'm crippled. I'm crippled and I'm fucking sick. That's some bullshit, dude. That's a double whammy. And I wouldn't get sick if it wasn't for this guy coming in here sick all the time. It's all Sal's fault. It's usually my fault. It's your fault. I hurt my fucking foot too. I told you that. He's yeah, the um, first. It's he's your, the typhoid Mary. It's right? your fault. I tore my Achilles. You're the whole purpose of having someone like you on the show is so I can fucking get the PubMed stuff sent to me before right. I go fuck myself up. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And then you come in sick on top of that too. So with 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 great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Mm. And so I, I didn't um, failing. Yeah, 2017 just, failing. Let's I have just, a good 2000. I gotta have better responsibility. Somebody's gotta take the failure with my you know power. I mean? That's mm. that's leadership. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. I'll make sure that uh, that the economy is better in America. I'll Thank make you. sure that there's more Please. world peace. I love these it. are all things I affect. Uh, Adam's illnesses. Yeah, all the things. Spelling that, of words. Yeah, all that stuff. All we gotta make things. sure we get it. Yeah. Covered so New Year, New Year, New Me. <laughs> it's all, it's all new, new Year, New South. That's right. Uh, it's coming in. Get it together. Do you guys it's coming have, in organized and efficient. Do you guys have good New Year's uh, Eve parties? Uh, did you guys both stay up? Is that what you call it? Yeah. yeah. No, I did. I you stay up? up, dude? I did, but I didn't watch any of those stupid. Like, talk about the worst show on television uh, is one of those countdown shows. Do you know it used to be just Dick Clark? Now there's like four of them. Yeah, we were watching like the. Uh, like the I don't know what, what like the not so good version. Was, is <laughs> yeah. Kathy Griffin still doing? Last I year know. I watched her do it. It was awful. It was no, on she's, TV. She's done. Oh, she's it was done. awful. Well, we were watching the Steve Harvey one at, for, at first, and I was looking at everybody, and I just I can't move. I'm fucking all handicapped inside the 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 seat and shit, and I'm watching the TV, and I'm going like, why are we watching this one? Why aren't we watching like the the only one that's even halfway worth watching, which is the Dick Clark, which is now Ryan Seacrest who does it because yeah. It's the most popular one that's been going forever. It has the best Times Square and all that. Yeah, it has the best singers on it. Yada yada. What? Now they have all these competing ones, and they're all doing different stuff. So I we hopped around the Steve Harvey one, the Dick Clark one, and then there was another one. And the the other two besides the Dick Clark one, I mean, they're I think I'm with you. I think they're kind of silly, anyways. But the other one was really stupid. They had this, and I don't even know who she is. There's a TV announcer who obviously is famous. I should know him, but I don't follow fucking famous people. And him and his girl of 20 years of dating got married like the the final three minutes before the ball dropped. And what? it was all televised. Him, and they said their vows on TV and stuff like that. And I know there's somebody who's listening right now. Like, oh, my God, that was so romantic. I love it. Idea. I'm like, I think that's cheesy as fuck. Who gives a <laughs> shit about them? Like, uh, why yeah, are they yeah. on there? So getting- now you've made this year all about you. Right. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, is that? Yeah, that to me yeah, is so weird. Yeah, thanks a lot. I thought it was. I'm sitting next to my, my niece. and I'm like, is this weird to you? This is weird to me to be watching this right now. Like, yeah. I think that's just I don't know who either one of these people are. We're about to watch the ball drop. All of a sudden it cuts over. To these wedding vows. Three, two, one. You're two. in our wedding. You guys yeah. didn't see that. You guys didn't no, see any of this. I don't yeah. watch that oh, shit. No. You, you know, did you stay till the the, till the ball dropped all the way? So what? It, what? This is so. It's funny you ask that because as I get older, I give less and less shits about yeah. staying awake to watch it turn midnight. You know what I'm saying? It's not yeah. even a big deal Do your anymore. Kids care. My kids just want to stay awake because it's a time. Because they can't. Yeah, because right? they can stay yeah. awake. So yeah. you're just, you know, and you know, our family gets together. And there's a lot of people. So you have all these 
cranky ass tired kids in pajamas. Because <laughs> you know what happens when you keep a kid up all night. Oh, yeah. Or wound up it on sugar. It always sounds like a good idea to them. And then they're just like, yeah. you know, dozing off, getting mad. What I end up doing, and this is like probably the second or third year I've done this now, is I set my alarm and I go to sleep and then wake up before midnight. Oh, wow. That is yeah. A, that is an advanced dad move. You know That's like a cheat code yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right that one down. I'm uh, going to bed and yeah. then I'll wake Tell up. Tell your family you got some work to do. You go in your room. <laughs> Where'd Sal bed? go? Bro, so I literally, I mean, you can even check my alarm. It's 11.55 p.m. I woke up five minutes before. Watch the thing go down. Yay. Yeah, right. We're done. Okay, I'll see you we'll later. see you guys later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, do you guys I was drink? watching Jurassic Park. Did, That's all I was doing. Oh, the original one? They had like a whole marathon of all of them. We we literally watched like everyone leading up to like the the new one with the the guy from Guardian of the Galaxy. The first one was the only one that was good. Yeah, the rest of them were stupid. the rest of them were dumb. Did you guys drink? Did you guys drink a lot? No, really? I didn't drink a lot, but I drank. I drank uh, two of the four days we were out there. Mm. Yeah, but I don't think I think the most I had was like four drinks on one day. Mm. I never got like tossed up or anything. I would have, but Courtney was don't. working, so I was like just there by myself. It was kind of depressing. wait. It was just you and the kids. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and they passed the, out, and I put them to bed at like ten thirty. That's the best time to get drunk. What are you talking about? I know you're right <laughs> by uh, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I drink alone, like a real drunk. Yeah, like a real like a real asshole. Yeah. yeah, no, I didn't do that. I had like so I just got uh, this puppy, and so it was like, oh yeah, how'd that go? It was great. I mean it. It, it was a lot of fun. I had a good family time going down to get them in, in San Diego and stuff. And then driving back was, oh, my God. I always forget how long that shit takes. We were taking so many stops, too, on the way back because it was just like, you know, like it, there's so many things going on. I had to get them to go potty like every fucking rest stop and, you know, make sure all that was going on. But, yeah, it was cool. It was just it was chill. I was chilling with him, and we were just watching Jurassic Park, dude. That was my big, <laughs> did big you, night. Did you guys both even get ass or what? For get what? Get no, ass. not ass. until the next yeah. day. You didn't see either did I, dude. I was weak. I was yeah, I was totally disappointed. Totally in that too. weak. I, my girl, I don't know what she's thinking. We get I got to it, it twice. We did you God. really? Mm-hmm. Wow, Damn you! you. Wow. <laughs> shout out to Jessica hey, right now. Hey. Yeah. Shout out to Kids Jessica. Good looking out. Yeah. Why isn't it a shout out to? That's Sal? why he's so happy. <laughs> yeah, huh? yeah, yeah right. it should Maybe be a shout face. out to Sal too. We, bro. we get to this place. We we stayed at the same place. You guys all stayed at right. So you saw the place, right? Yeah. We're in the master bedroom, which is fucking epic. I think it's pimp. It's the, epic, right? Fireplace in it, fucking couch, and, you know, jacuzzi tub and dual shower, all, all the cool amenities. And we get it, we're, we're all set up, and, and uh, you know, I, I'm doing the math. I'm like, you know, hun, we have like 17 of your family members coming here. Like, I was just going to work. Oh, they'll just do air mattresses in the living room and up in the other this oh, and that. Oh, no, you got cock blocked. Dude, my <laughs> nephew. As asked if he could, if him and his girlfriend can stay on their blow up mattress in our room, in the room, and Katrina, like, is, you understand this is New Year's Eve, right? Quick to say yes, and then she's all frustrated because I, she's like, she wants some, and she wants me to get up and leave the room. I'm like, fucking, hey, I'm like, hobbling in, into the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're in, laying in bed, kissing yeah. on each other, so that fooling around, and all of a sudden she like wants to have sex, and my fucking nephew's over here on the on the on the blow up <laughs> air just mattress. Be real quiet. And she's like, let's just let's go sneak out and go. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. That's like a horror deer <laughs> with the crutches and get out. Everyone, wake everybody up here in this, you know, to the house. Let's, then, be, let's be honest, wow. though. Let's all be honest, though. If you were a 17-year-old kid with a oh, girlfriend. Oh, oh yeah. 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 17-year-old kid, you could cut my leg off. I'll still yeah. find a way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 36-year-old man. You, you MacGyver your way to yeah, sex. Yeah, 36 yeah. 36-year-old man. Okay. I'm like, uh, no. Yeah, 17-year-old kid, you're, you're going to go in the fuck. You go in the refrigerator. If that's the only place. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. We'll squeeze in here and we'll just do it in the cold. <laughs> We yeah, don't even care. We make it work. Yeah, it was pretty funny though. It yeah. was, it, and I was like, I don't know what you what you were thinking on that one. She's like, Fuck, I don't know what I was thinking either. I'm like, did, yeah. Did you guys make any like resolutions or anything? I know we talked about this a little bit, but did you make any new ones? I didn't or make it. I, well, I made I made one new one, and I actually wasn't going to show share it on the show, but it's funny because something happened this morning, so I feel like compelled to share it. So uh, I wasn't going to say anything, and I was like, "Okay, you know, I want. I've always wanted to make like an, an actual effort to go out of my way to do random acts of kindness to strangers." And I thought, "Okay, I'm going to set myself this goal of like, you know, once a week, you know, and see if I just actively am doing that." Now, hopefully, that catches fire, and I'm doing it every day, whatever, you know. But I, and I, I didn't even have a plan to like how this was going to play out. Well, this morning. I'm sick. I'm in the crutches. I'm driving over to work. I'm already fucking irritated, right? So I'm already in like an irritable, you know, moody mood, as Sal would say, right? Now. <laughs> so I, I'm He's the moody one. I'm driving to work and, and uh, my throat's all sore. So I pull into Starbucks uh, to get something hot to drink. 
and on Monterey Road, there's a drive through one. And as I pull up, there is this uh, this guy that's coming the other direction. And so we're both facing each other to go into the line to Starbucks. And I was there first, mm. just by a little bit, though. You know, it was like yeah. 30 seconds. And so there's this like awkward like moment. A tumbleweed goes through you guys. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's like this awkward moment of like who gets to go next. And I'm like, you know, I'm like irritated. I'm just in my head. I'm going like, how am I going to act if this guy just cuts in front of me? I'm like, who fucking cares about him? Whatever. It's no big deal. We don't have to be at work right away. It's no rush. You know, so I, I'm already in my head. Tonight, and the guy lets me go through. And I was uh-huh. like, oh, and in my head, I'm like, oh, that was really cool. So when I get up to pay for my Starbucks, I paid for his behind me. And it obviously don't tell him. I just drive away. So I've never met, never met the guy and everything like that. How did that work? You just said, how do you pay for someone before you know what they get? I got oh, the next guy. Yeah, you just, you, when you pull up, by the time you get to the window, he's already ordered and so oh, is the car okay. behind him. Okay. So they already have the order and I just said, hey, the guy behind me. Oh, I get it. Okay, can I take it? Can I, can I pay for his too? Thank God he was just only getting one coffee and it wasn't like for his whole <laughs> office, right? That was right. like, <clears throat> that would have sucked. If he was like, oh, yeah, that's uh, 75 Ten coffees. frappuccinos. He, yes, he just bought for his, <laughs> a soccer team, right? Hey, egg McMuffins. Fuck. Yeah. No, it was no big deal. So that's something I added to my my list of things. That, and I'm still- Did you uh, wait to see the look on his face or anything? You just took off? No, I just took off. You know, mm. whatever. I don't even know how, how long it took before she even said anything to him. So plus I knew I was already in that line long enough and was worried I was going to be late coming in here. So- I took off, but that's something that I I want to, and I thought, you know, what struck me was what made me do it was I said that to myself. I didn't tell anybody this. It was just something that like I I said to myself because I had created this basketball and snowboarding goals for myself this year. And here's the ball (laughs) dropping and I'm looking at myself Uh, like there'll be no snowboarding or basketball in my future anytime soon. So what a shitty way to start your new year's resolution off. (laughs) So I was like, I better add to this something, right? You have to adjust this a little bit. Right, right. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to continue on with uh, the book reading goals that I set last year. Similar. I'm going to push myself a little bit more this year. And then the other one was the random acts of kindness. And I still, I'm still planning on pursuing playing ball and snowboarding and I'll rehab and, and share my journey on that whole process. This just happens to be a fucking, and it's fucking life. You know, it is what it is. It happened. Um, and I'll make sure to take the right steps to get better. And that'll be all, all of what I'd be focusing on over the next couple of months. So that's pretty much, uh, all I added to that. That's very nice. That's a nice yeah. thing. We, uh, Justin did a really nice act of kindness this morning. Did you see what he did? No, what did you do? <laughs> so we had, you saw what he, we had a, a mouse in the oh, gym. Oh, God. So yeah, we were we were doing our morning meeting and the a little little mouse. Uh, I don't know if it started out nice. It was nice. You you well you right because at yeah, first you yeah. were trying to. It uh, looked like a Tom and Jerry fucking cartoon. Yeah, I was I was like whack a moleing. You were trying to yeah. with the stick, which is like impossible. Yeah, and uh, it was like a little thin stick. Too. Yeah, it was, it was silly. <laughs> and uh, but no, eventually Justin caught the mouse and then we went outside and we set him free. Yeah. So in the dumpster. And the yeah, well, I mean that's good for mice, right? Yeah, they There's like, like they like to there. hang out in trash. He's gonna wake up in the dump yeah, with, with the rest of his family or whatever. Because don't they come? <laughs> I back did want to kill him. Huh? I'll be honest, I had tendencies towards to it. kill the mouse. Yeah, yeah, I felt it inside. I, I, yeah, I wasn't gonna let you kill a mouse. Yeah. Poor guy. Well, you know, mice are very intelligent. Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. Who told you that? Mice are incredibly intelligent. Where did you read that? Um, PETA. <laughs> PETA said you read yeah. that on PETA. Yeah, mice and pigs. Pigs I've heard are pigs smart. Are, yeah. yeah, pigs are smart. People say pigs are smarter than dogs. So the only can, problem with octopus are really smart. The only problem with pigs what? is that they're delicious. I heard jellyfish live yeah. forever. Jellyfish do live forever. Yeah, yeah. octopus are. Random facts lots snake. of rumors out there. Random the facts for you kids, yeah. Dave. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Octopus are very intelligent. Have you ever seen I them know. get I'm themselves out of a jar? So if you put an octopus in a jar and screw the lid, it'll unscrew the lid from the inside and right. get itself out. How fucking crazy is that? That's yeah. pretty legit. Yeah. yeah, it is. I had octopus on New Year's too. We ate that. Did you really? Uh huh. No. Really? Yeah. My dad got some octopus uh, in. Uh, I think he went to Monterey, and uh, we had some octopus. Wow. I haven't had that in a long that's time. A, that's a bold move. Why? Did you have a lot of people at your little New Year's get get together? Or was it small? Forty something. Holy shit! I thought yeah. ours was big. Every time we do them too, my girl, she's always yeah, like, you got "God big family, damn, dude. yeah." So it's, so it's it's people sitting everywhere and throughout the whole house. So we got the kitchen table, dining room table, we got other tables set up over here, over there, and people sitting outside even though it's cold. It's just You guys like always party like over these holidays and stuff? It's it's usually about 30 to 40 people. Wow. At least we had some lamb meat and some steak and a bunch of pasta and uh 
what was that? What did I say? Octopus. Yeah. And all that. A lot of babies. My sister has a little baby now. He's adorable. You're uh, not eating babies though. No, we don't do that. Yeah, we don't do that anymore. Yeah. That was a one time thing. Good. <laughs> but uh, no. Check. But no, we have all these little babies now in the running around. It's just a lot of fun. I love kids. Yeah. So I'm always playing with them and stuff. I was. You it's know what time. I did this weekend too is picked up the uh, old PlayStation controller, man. The I old one, like the first one. No, 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 no. I mean, I like I play all my all my nephews and stuff are anywhere between seventeen and like twenty five. Just show them what time it is, or just get your ass kicked. Actually, I was actually very proud of myself. I, <laughs> I, I had one of my you nephews. Have muscle memory there. I had yeah, I had one of my nephews that was pretty badass and gave me a whooping a majority of the time. Although I did win some games. We played Madden and we played NBA Two K Seventeen, right? Mm. So I hung in there, man. It took me, it took me a game of each game. To like, rem- what, yeah, back. what is triangle? What circle? Give me all this stuff. And they're making fun of me. That's what was great. They're just like, <laughs> oh, your uncle doesn't know anything. I'm like, wait, relax, kids. Give me yeah, one. I'll fuck- figure it out. Give me one fucking game of playing here, and then it's on, right? So, and I did. I spanked most of them for most of the weekend. They were all. They were. All, it was pretty funny because they went from talking shit to me, being like, oh shit, uncle's cool, you know, because oh, yeah. he could play Madden and NBA. I had no one thought I had those skill sets. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, awesome. It did give me the little itch a little bit, though. I used to kind of used to play all the time as a kid, you know, and I just, it's been a long time. I, I told them, I said, I stopped playing when I was 27, 27, 28, somewhere in that range, because first player games out of nowhere, okay, fucking 10, 15 plus years, more than that, 15, 20 years of playing these games, never once in my life has this happened. Then out of the blue, I'm playing Halo or Gears of War or you know oh, yeah. Call of Duty. I call of Duty is the one, one I got into. One of those one of those first player or first person views, and it started to get me nauseous and sick. Mm. And I thought maybe I was just happened to be sick. And I must have I must have tried maybe 10, 15 times after it would get me so dizzy. Yep, yep. Go, it's a skill. God, you got to practice that. It's a total skill. You will get nauseous if you were you close to the TV. When, well, no. What was weird is that I've been doing this, like I said, for fifteen to twenty years with no problems. There's been first player games like that and Call of Duty and uh, you know Doom. I mean, they've been around forever, so I've never had a problem with this. It, that's what was so weird was all of a sudden, just hit me one day. Are you getting? Let me ask you a question. Are you getting any dizziness otherwise? No, I don't ever. Okay. I'm yeah. wondering if you got because if you got what I had and I had a little bit, I had that vertigo. Yeah, wonder if it was a virus that might might make your throw your equilibrium off a little bit. Well, so of course I I thought of all these things and thought, okay, I'll just maybe I need to get better and then we'll see. No, I I only felt it when I would play this these games, right? So I could play the basketball, the football. I could play all these normal games, but if I play a first person now, which I would play, I played for 15, 20 years with no problems. Now, if I play it, uh, after about 10, 15 minutes of playing it, I can handle the first like five, two minutes. But then after a while, I got to look away. I'm just, I'm starting to get dizzy and then I'll get nauseous mm. and then I'll want to throw up. Or, or you're I'm, just getting old. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Yeah. Mm. It's definitely what it feels mm-hmm. like. So, God damn it. Mm. Well, We're all getting old. I did learn something else interesting. Just kind of fascinating. Did you know you can stretch really, really good when you're slightly drunk? <laughs> oh, I believe that. Yeah, dude, it makes sense because most people that it's survive, a central, it's a central nervous system depressant. Right. right. Anything that's going to depress the central nervous system, you're going to probably get more range of motion. Of course, also be careful because I'm going to start branding drunk yoga. <laughs> Dro- droga. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I I get down and start doing some stretches. It's actually, a really good idea. And uh, and for the for the one of the first you times heard it here first. Right. You know how stretching sucks, right? They have those wine hurts? classes. Yeah. What are they? Uh, they have those wine. They have wine classes where people do wine and yoga. Yeah, wine and yoga. That. Yeah, yeah, that's that. popular. Mm-hmm. So I'm getting into stretches, and they Whiskey feel and really, really good, like really good. So I stretch for probably an hour and a half straight. Oh my god. Yeah, which is which is a, 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 exactly approximately an hour and a half longer than I normally. Would. You and your girl are by yourself, huh? First, it was me. Then my girl kind of joined me a little bit, and then I just kept doing it all like just for the rest of the night. And Can it you was, picture him right now doing these like just, stretches in his I yoga pants? I feel like pant. he's in yeah, in like his tights, in his yeah. yoga he's pants, tights, and shit, right? like long no, 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 socks. No. You guys are you, you guys are, with his drink. You guys are picturing me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was at this point I was naked. Of course, so, <laughs> yeah. So if you're gonna picture, be accurate <laughs> with how you picture this. I was I was naked. I got deep enough to in some of these stretches like lizard and stuff like that where the the you know my stuff was on the floor you know what i'm saying wow. so wow. i'm like suspended like, and then like it, then it's on bean the bean bag was was <laughs> <Yeah>. touching <laughs> exactly wow so it was like a, which is nice cuz it gives you feedback i'm like whoa oh yeah i got low <laughs> yeah like each you time you can really see any into improvement it. huh any improvement 
Uh, yeah, my, my mobility. Do you want to see how low I can get? I do, I'll actually. touch it on the floor again. I do want to. <laughs> I don't want to see that part, but oh, I do want to yeah. see your After mobility the show. improved. <laughs> we After will. the show, yeah, show those pants. Yeah. Where, the, where the fuck is this bird at? Bring I don't it. Know, get, get it away from Naked South. <laughs> being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. Quee-qua. First question is from Tom D. Spence. Massages, good, bad, or indifferent? Oh, are you kidding me? They're Ooh, very good. I yeah. love them. There's a lot of... It's a necessity for th- me. There's a lot of benefits to getting a good, and I say make, I make sure I say good, massage. The first of which, and this is very basic, is touch. And a lot of people do not um, give this enough credence. Mm-hmm. It, uh, humans need, require, we crave and it. benefit from being touched. And, uh, you know, if, if you're one of those people that, you know, cause I know I used to get, I used to have a facility with a massage therapist in it and some people would be like, Oh, I don't like, ma-, and I always thought this was weird. I don't like massages. I don't like people kind of touching me or whatever. Yeah. Those are the people that probably would benefit the most yeah. from someone, uh, touching them. But studies will show human touch with good intention. So not someone punching you or hitting you obviously, but, or harassing you, but giving you good, you know, good form of touch will um, increase uh, or uh, levels of feel good mm-hmm. uh, neurochemicals and hormones in the body will decrease stress hormones in the body will elicit a parasympathetic response in the body which is a relaxing state just from being touched we know with with babies uh, babies need it to thrive there's some pretty awful studies that were done in the former Soviet Union where, you know, they didn't, they had some kids that weren't touched very much and they had uh, what they called failed to thrive or they didn't grow. So that's the first thing is just the touch. The next thing is the actual function of the massage. I know, Adam, you have a lot of experience, right? Because your girlfriend. Yeah, no, this is what. This could, is her thing. This is how she got me right here, bro. She got me right here by, by massage. I mean, she was the one who really opened my eyes. And this was before we were even dating. I hired her, her company to do massages in uh, at my business. And that's how we first met. And we she was just, she was the owner and run, or her and her mother owned the business and they were the ones that were contracting out to all the massage therapists. Well, part of the deal that we contracted was that her I, that I could come in and that I had four free massages every month. So every week I was coming in and getting massaged. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, it, was, it was amazing. <laughs> And then, uh, and then that her and I would talk afterwards. Full release. And she really no this no oh god <laughs> Not never, yet. don't you dare ever say that in front of her. <laughs> oh, I know oh, she, that's a big deal. Yeah, oh yeah, oh it's yeah, a very yeah, big yeah. deal for you. I mean even years after us her and I being together living together and dating. Heaven forbid I try to get some ass when I'm on the table, dude. No, it's very... You, just I mean, not happening. It's uh, true because... I'm not, not in work mode. Oh, no. dude, I'm naked. I'm laying there. A lot of times I'll reach around, try and grab her butt while she's like massaging me and stuff like that. Whack. <laughs> it's, it's all... But, you know, I get it because I'm the same way when I teach some... If I'm really teaching someone... Like if I'm teaching you, if I, we're just working out, then I don't give a shit. You can just work out with me and do whatever the fuck you want. I'm not paying attention to you. But if I'm teaching you and I'm trying to provide you help or service, I get into it. I'm serious about it, right? So I get the whole thing where, you know, when she's really trying to show me the benefits of a massage and why I need to do it, and I'm messing around, she's going to fucking give me shit, right? They also, don't they also hate it if you call them a masseuse? Yeah, masseuse is not what you call a massage therapist. Yeah. A massage mm-hmm. therapist is like a professional who, you know, massages people. Masseuse. There is, there's so a skill to it. Right, and and I've heard the term body worker too. So sure. where, where do they, uh, where does that fall? It's all, it's all under the same category. The same yeah, massage therapist and a body worker could be considered the same thing, even though some people like... Well, some body workers will include um, rehab movements and exercise Right, but a good their- a good massage therapist, just like a good personal trainer, is versed in m- sure. m- multiple modalities. So, like my girl can do all of it, right? Thai and different types of PNF and things like that. So, mm-hmm. she basically she could uh, she curtails the uh, 
the massage to my needs. So whatever it is that well, she's done Thai. It's, I've been interested in that. Just mm-hmm. I don't like the Thai. I've stuff. never tried it. She yeah. likes Thai it. Can be pretty aggressive. It is. Oh yeah, they like walk on you and pull oh, you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. very, it's very, very great. And I, I like, I like a really deep tissue massage because I feel like I get the most relief from that. Mm-hmm. So, and a really good massage therapist, you a lot of them, you don't even gotta tell them anything. Like if they're really good. They'll be able to. They can feel it. Yeah, they can feel Mm -hmm. where you're really tight, and you know they have the 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 thing that her and I used to go back and forth on, and I still tease to this day is the language is a little woo woo for me. Oh yeah, right for sure. So the language is a little woo woo, but if you can get beyond that and actually really open open your mind a little bit, there is a lot of great truths behind it. It's just that they. We didn't have a lot of terms for this, and so just like we've talked about this before, about it's like Chinese medicine, right? With Chinese yeah. medicine, and we we say things like your yi and shit like that, and you know th- this right here is another example of you know something that's been practiced for thousands of years that has lots of benefits, and they've even made names around it, but some people shy away from it because they feel like it's too. Oh, that's made up. And that's they'll say made- stuff like, uh, I can feel your energy here. Right, right. We need to release this energy there and all that stuff. And then they'll say, but uh, there's an intuitive aspect to it. And I can relate to it because as a personal trainer, when you've been training people for a long time, there's a very intuitive aspect to it as well. And Abs- sometimes you absolutely. can't put words to it. Like you can look at a person and you can tell that there may be a muscle imbalance here, your function is wrong there, or it looks like you're kind of tight in this area, and then you go and test it, and then you're, you're right, but there's that intuitive aspect just from doing it for a long time. The thing that I really like about massage is that Western medicine, until re- relatively recently, didn't have a way to explain why it helps. For a long time, Western medicine almost... Uh, downplayed it and would say things like, Mm -hmm. it doesn't change anything in the muscle. You're not breaking up adhesions. You're not. And the reality is on a physical level, are you changing what the muscle actually looks like? Probably not. But what you are doing is you're changing the central nervous system and how it's uh, getting that muscle to, uh, to react and tense up. When you apply pressure to a muscle, you are activating certain receptors which relieve, uh, release uh, uh, like natural painkillers, but you're also telling the central nervous system to calm down. To mm-hmm. calm down. At first, you tell it to tighten up. This is why when you have a knot, a quote unquote knot, and someone presses on it, and at first it hurts really bad, and then all of a sudden you feel that release where mm-hmm. that that muscle, that, that tight knot, all of a sudden seems to, you know, go away or or, or uh, dissipate or whatever. What you're noticing is your central nervous system starting to uh, relax. Mm -hmm. And many times, tight muscles, it's not the muscles themselves that are tight. You know, so don't think of it as like it's different tissue. The tissue is the same. Think of it as it's no different than you flexing a muscle on on a kind of a low level, on a constant low level without trying to flex that muscle. Well, it's like, have you ever done one of those, um, I'm trying to think like in chemistry we had this this like rod that you you stick it's like an electrode you, everybody would kind of hold hands together and like the electricity would go through your body and immediately when you feel electricity in your body like you just feel your muscles respond tense up and you just tense it almost feel it almost feels like you're sort of you know tuning that down a bit yes here's my so here's one of this was my first like legit experience with massage therapy. So I had a massage therapist who mentored me in uh, in many different ways, and this was one of them, was with the benefits of massage therapy. Now, up until this point, I knew people enjoyed it, people liked it. I've, I'd worked in the past with really good massage therapists, and I could see the benefit, but I didn't consider it to be a fundamentally important uh, aspect of you know wellness and fitness. It was just mm-hmm. something cool, but it's not fundamental. So up until at this point, I had been training a lot of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, uh, especially when you use the gi, it's very grip intensive. So your hands are constantly working, constantly gripping, constantly gripping. And I started to develop like tennis elbow mm-hmm. symptoms in my elbows. And this is, you know, tight, you know, uh, you know, tight muscles that attach around the elbow, in particular the forearms, the forearm flexors and the forearm extensors. And they just hurt. And what, what happened is I'd have to warm up and do all this you know, stuff before I do jujitsu so that they wouldn't hurt. A couple times I had to take ibuprofen. And I couldn't figure out 
how to get rid of this this pain, even though I was a trainer. Even you were though thinking I, about it as a tissue issue. Yeah, I was like, what's going on? And the problem with the wrists are they lock. So it's not like you can really stretch your flexors and extensors past a certain point because then the wrist locks. And so like, now what? What do I do now, right? Mm-hmm. So she finally convinces me to get on her table and she's going to work on my forearms. And she tells me, listen, she goes will you come in here consistently for the next few weeks? And I tell her, oh, I can't really make that commitment because I'm really busy. This is my excuses, right? So she said, well, I'm going to do a really hard one then. It's going to kind of hurt a little bit more at first, but then it'll get better. And so I'm just like, look, do your worst. Like, give me your hardest, whatever. And, you know, because I don't know if I'll be back next week. I'll be inconsistent. <clears throat> so she spends an hour and a half on my forearms, just my forearms, and proceeds to fuck me up. Like, literally gets in there and it becomes progressively and progressively deeper and more painful mm-hmm. as she's doing these this crazy pressure with her elbows and forearms and hands into my forearms. So I'm like sitting on the edge of the, I'm sitting in front of the, the table with my forearms up on the table and she's flipping my arms over and doing it either side. It was so painful, but I didn't want to say anything to her because, you know, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to, you know, like kind of give in or whatever, you know, the ego, right? Right. Um, sure enough, they hurt a little bit more that day. The next day, the pain was reduced by about 20%. Over the course of three days, the pain went away completely, gone. Like never again did I have that problem with my forearms. And at that point, I became completely sold. Hmm. And I started diving deep into what may actually be happening on a scientific level with massage therapy. Because up until this point, all the explanations are like what Adam said, kind of woo-woo, which I fucking hate. I don't like Mm -hmm. the woo. Personally, I don't like the woo-woo explanations because you're only going to be able to communicate that to a certain type, a certain amount of people. For for me, if I feel it and I see yoga. Yeah. So for me personally, if I experience it and I see it, then you can give me a woo-woo explanation and I'm going to be okay with it because I can see what's going on. But when I'm trying to communicate this to clients and stuff, right. Some people will accept it, but a lot of people are going to look at me and be like, hey. No, a lot of people reject it just because of that, which is unfortunate yes. because it's normally those people that probably would get the yes. most benefit from it, which is, mm-hmm. I always try, I I mean, I, I joke with you guys off air and stuff because, you know, Katrina uses those terms because she's been in massage therapy for fucking 20 something years of her life. So she was born and raised in it. Her mom started the school and the clinic here years before even she was involved in it. So... Her verbiage is that way. And so her and I go back and forth all the time. Like, stop saying it like that. Like, that's not, that's right. bullshit. So, so, but, so what you have to but, think of is if you have a constantly, if you have a muscle that's in a constant state of tonus, if it's slightly tensed by your central nervous system for whatever reason, whether it's because you're protecting an injury that you currently have, an injury that you used to have, and so now you've got this recruitment pattern, even though the injury's gone, the recruitment pattern stays. Or if this is the result of an emotion, Mm -hmm. which for sure your state of mind will affect how muscles tense up. If you're scared, if you're depressed, if you're mad, things change and whatever. Well, sympathetic, parasympathetic, like that's, that was the biggest like thing for me, like going through and like being on a table and having somebody manually kind of manipulate my tissue and kind of do all this for me. It's like now I'm in the passenger seat. Right. And I understand what that feels like now. And that's why it was such a game changer for me was I didn't know how to get to that state. Like it was really hard for me to do because everything I knew about training and, and being successful and doing all this stuff like required tense and required like me just like pressing forward. Like I didn't really know what that other gear was. So mm-hmm. that really helped me. Well, that- there, there's a big piece to that to add to that, that people don't realize that, you know, some people, maybe you don't have a major injury or a major knots like you think you, so you need a massage, but some people are just overly tent and just tense all over all, yeah, all over and mentally. And when you finally, I can always feel, I mean, she can always feel too. She'll tell me. She'll be massaging me like, like let's say I've just had a lot going on, a lot with work. Maybe I haven't been on her table for like a couple of weeks in a row or like that. And she'll be massaging me and it'll be like 15 minutes in, right? I'm laying there. And then she'll be, as she'll say out loud, all of a sudden I'll hear it be quiet, silent music going, candles, whatever. And all of a sudden I hear her go like, finally. And, the, and it's weird because I can feel myself mentally just kind of go, <sighs> mm-hmm. And I re- I relax, and then she can feel it in my body completely. Just so this is settle down. This is what's happening on a scientific level. When you have a a, a tight muscle uh, or a muscle that's getting a, a signal from your central nervous system to prepare itself or to protect itself or to pr- protect a particular type of movement, 
when you press on that muscle with tension in a particular way, it uh, sends a signal to the CNS for that muscle to relax and the CNS signal starts to dampen. Stretching does this as well, but in a slightly different way. Stretching and massage are very similar though, but it's just it's just different. Massage can do things that stretching can't do and vice versa. This is why they're both important. So tension or pressing on these muscles causes things to relax. And here's the other thing too, when people, when massage therapists say you're storing your uh, your, your, uh, your your emotions in these muscles or your hips, or when people notice a, an emotional release from massage, there is a dual, there is a, a, a two-way street with this. There's feedback that goes in either direction. If at this moment right now you're listening to the podcast and all of a sudden, I'll give you an extreme example, a lion jumps out in front of you out of nowhere, for sure your muscles are going to change. <laughs> for sure your signals to your muscles are going to change. If you get a phone call right now that one of your kids got in an accident or someone you care about got in an accident or if you just lost your job, for sure a physical change will happen in your body. Okay, That can happen on lower levels too. Little bits of stress here and there, thoughts, whatever, will change how your body feels, reacts, change how your central nervous system fires things on low levels. Uh, that's without debate. Now, the reverse is true. The reverse is true. Your emotions and your state of mind also get feedback from your body. So if your body is tight and somebody goes in and manually gets your body to relax, all of a sudden your brain and your mind and your emotions, whatever, getting at the signal that I'm safe. I can like relax. And then all of a sudden emotions come out like I'm, I'm safe to cry now. So if you, and this is, this is true, by the way, you talk to any massage therapist who's been doing this for any length of period of time. They'll tell you people crying on their table, way more, more, way more common than than you realize. Oh yeah, way more common. Oh, yeah. And it's that it's that feedback system. So uh, uh, so I guess I mean th- we kind of went off on a rant here, mm. but uh, I consider. Well, we were answering it. I mean, I think I think there is uh, a lot of good to it. I think that um, more people probably need it in their life. Now that's not to say everybody absolutely needs it because if you're somebody who does do a lot of mobility work and maybe you meditate and you get you get a lot for me this has to be part of my routine because I already don't do enough of that stuff so I already this yeah. is something that I like to schedule in my life it's as expensive as it may be it's it's a value to me because I know that I don't put the daily discipline in that I should put into the meditation and the consistent mobility work and some of that. So it's also another Dude. way for me to give similar relief. So I'll tell you something. So massages, sometimes people are like, oh, they're expensive. You know, just like getting a gym membership is expensive or eating healthy is expensive. All these things are expensive. So this reminds me of a documentary I just watched, which I, which I highly recommend you guys watch. Uh, some of the stuff, most of the stuff they talk on there, uh, uh, on the documentary about, you guys will, under, will know, but there's some pretty fascinating stuff. The name of the documentary is The Science of Fasting. And I promise you it's connected to the, to the question that we're talking about. My sister-in-law actually just told me all about Fucking that. Fucking yeah. watch this documentary. First of all, the science of fasting, fascinating stuff, uh, yeah. especially on the effects of fasting on cancer, uh, on cancer cells and how it protects healthy cells. Is it on Netflix? It's on uh, Amazon Prime. Amazon. We'll have it. So I don't, I'm not going to go into that because that's another topic. But what I noticed was, which was fascinating, in some of these Eastern European nations, in Russia in particular, for example, Russia has a little bit of a different approach to medicine. Part of it was because during the Soviet Union, they've have all these, first of all, their cultures have involved things like cold therapy, massage, and fasting for a lot longer than Western cultures have, or or, or most Western cultures, because some Western cultures have had this as well. But uh, it was included as part of the protocol, and doctors administer it. So they were showing these, these clinics. These are actual medical clinics with doctors, nurses, whatever. People will go there with asthma, bronchitis, all these chronic type of illnesses or, or issues, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, arthritis whatever. Mm-hmm. They'll go there and the doctors will prescribe fasting. They'll prescribe cold and hot therapy. They'll prescribe massage. So people will go there for two or three weeks. Mm-hmm. The success rate is fucking amazing. Right. The success rate for a lot of these people is 50%. And we're talking about chronic illnesses that have zero cures. And as I was watching this, I was really, I was realizing, you know, if we would apply these things to ourselves here, sure, they cost a little bit of money up front, but they save you yeah. way more money. And I could massage is right up there. Like if you got a massage, you know, every other week, and then you did your stretching, you watch your nutrition, you knew how to meditate, you fasted when you, when you needed to, 
yeah, that's going to cost you money up front, but think about all the money that's going to save you later on and just medicine and doctor bills and, you know, sick and sick time and quality of life. Oh, so. no doubt. No doubt. So Adam, by the way, you can tell me to turn off your microphone, if you're <laughs> blow your nose or cough. Sorry. Yeah, I try, doing too I try to push. I try and push. I know. Fuck, dude. I, you know, I forgot my damn Organifi today. I've been this whole, when it first started coming on, I was feeling really good. I was, I was drinking that and staying on top of all the green my, juice. that and our, uh, you know, we got the gift from What's Shauna? Your, no, 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 no. Is it Nature's Nature, Valley? Nature, Nature's, Nature's Way. Oh, yeah. Nature's Way. Yeah, Nature's Way. Oh, oh shout out to Nature's that's Way. That's right. That was uh, that was really nice to see. Yeah, that. no, they, awesome. they. I guess they. I guess when we mentioned them the other day, I guess all they got all kinds of love over there. The so. elderberry zinc laws. Yeah, so I've been doing the edel, that, and I've been doing zinc, and I did Mucinex, and then the only thing I'm missing is my Sudafed. And my order Organifi this morning because I I left it with Katrina's bag because we took it up to there for New Year's because every day we were having the green mm. and the red juice, so yeah, it's kind of kicking my ass. Did you guys try the cacao now. yet? The Organifi yes. cacao, yeah, it's it's great. Did you put it in your coffee? Uh huh. It's good, right? Yeah, put it in like you know in the the Chimera like one of those K cup things. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Do you get a little? Good. Did you notice more of a a buzz? Yeah, well, I just, yeah, it gives you like that little extra little zing. Yeah. I don't know if that was, you know, the case or if it was just like, you know, the, the coffee was the, on point. But yeah. Theobromine is in cacao and it's chemically very similar to caffeine. So when you take hmm. good quality raw cacao with caffeine, you're going to get more of a stimulator. I liked a little bit of a kick though. It's like a spice there. Oh, I loved yeah, it. It was nice. Really good stuff. All right, but yeah, so we'll turn your mic off when you blow your nose. <laughs> you yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, just wave to me. All right, yeah. I got you, I got you. All right, our next question is Lindsay One Dove. Tips for increasing female libido. You know, this is uh, this is this becomes a thing for, uh, in particular, moms after they have children. I know because it's being tired and also the hormones change I've quite a bit. I've never had any problems with the moms. Huh? <laughs> God damn <laughs> I mean, let's just be honest. Yeah, yeah. just keep it real. That's, yeah. that's the wheelhouse. <laughs> well, yeah. well, you know, hormones change after you have a child. For I think it's definitely while you're breastfeeding, because evolutionarily speaking, it makes sense, right? That you don't want to necessarily get pregnant right away afterwards. That could be a dangerous thing. But uh, tip for increasing female libido. You know, same stuff that you would recommend for increasing Strength male training. libido. But I know Lindsay does this stuff, right. so she's a she's an avid listener and she's lifting, so she's running maps. So yeah. the first thing I would say would be get into a good lifting routine, right. exercise sure. and right. sleep and all that kind of stuff. You know, also, you know, I would imagine it's very very similar with as women as it is with men. I know all the factors. You talk about strength training, talk about different nutrition, talk about all these supplements I could be taking. Nothing makes a bigger difference on my libido than fucking stress. Yeah. Stress will fuck it up more than anything else, and in good spirits, yep. will change. That to me is, uh, you know, the biggest rock of all the things that I could contribute as far as what I have noticed in my experience personally and with clients. If you are eating correctly, you're doing all these things, you feel sexy, all these other things that all do matter, but you got a lot of stress, right. whether it be family, personal relationship, or business. That shit will Hit fucking- the nail on the head. Right. I mean, that, my wife and I went through that whole process. It was like, oh my God, you know, like, what can we do to kind of bring this, 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 you know, energy back? And it was really just like alleviating a lot of these things that were just bombarding, you know, my wife on a constant, you know, day-to-day -day basis. So that was like, my focus was just really to just alleviate a lot of these things that were just like, I mean, she just was not in the mood. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. Like, and I had to like create the environment that, that was a more- you know, in that direction. Like vacuuming, washing the yeah. dishes. Yeah, like cleaning. my shirt off and I'm like cleaning, yeah. you know what I mean? And it didn't work for a while. She didn't get turned on because you had your shirt off, bro. She no, got turned on because you vacuumed. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I even put a cowboy hat on. You Did know the whole saying? thing? Yeah. You know, um, more often than not, low libido is not a result of anything chemically or hormonally in the body. I know a lot of people think that, like my libido is low, there must be something wrong with me, my hormones are off or my thyroid is off. And sometimes that, Which it can that be. is the case. Yeah, it can be that. Yeah, sometimes it is the case, but more often than not, it's it's just an emotional yeah. situation. Like I don't feel appreciated, or I feel stressed, or I don't feel connected mm -hmm. to my partner. I know for me, you know, uh, when I was going through kind of the like the beginning of my divorce or whatever, and I was dating uh, Jessica, there were times where I was like, "Man, what's wrong with me?" Like I I normally have a very high libido. And me and her would start talking. We would just start talking about the whole situation. And I was able to process some of the stuff that I was feeling. And then 
it's literally within 30 minutes, I'd be aroused. And I started putting that together and being like, well, there's nothing wrong with me. It's just this stuff that I need to talk about. You get it off your chest. And I start to feel better. Dude, I, you know, I've told you guys about, you know, and I know I've, I've said this on this show several times, and I'm sure Lindsay's heard this before because I know she's been listening for a long time. The book reading thing with Katrina was a huge game changer for us. We also had this game. I don't use it very often because we, we do read together on a regular basis. Uh, I forget the name of it, so those I know, I know Jackie will be doing the notes on this. So Jackie, if you if you message me, I'll have it for the show notes. But I, I was given this gift, and it's like just this little um, one of those little glass, you know, things that holds a bunch of cards, right? So there's like like for board games, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And there's probably you know 300, 500 cards in there, and the cards just have like little conversation starters. That's all in the game. And it's really just like a party game to get conversation and dialogue going. And Katrina and I, one night just for shits and giggles, pulled it out and, and just like started going through like, Oh, let's see this game. What it's all about. And it's really designed for parties. Lots of people that don't know each other, kind of break the ice type of stuff. But we started reading them and it really sparked up conversations that we just had never had. And I tell you what, like, you know, you know, you those that have been in a relationship for a really long time, like I know that I've been with my girl and and for seven years because I love her and I love her for tons of reasons. But we take a lot of those reasons for granted and we even start to forget some of those things. And a lot of those things are what drove us to be attracted to them and want them physically, you know, and you start to forget some of that stuff. And by doing this and playing this game where we started having conversation the way she answered certain things about the, you know, and we each took a turn, like it would be a statement about something like uh, something that you learned from your father, you know, between the ages of five and 12 go, you know? And so she goes and like has to really think about that. Right. And then she delivers and then I deliver it. And then it starts up this big old long conversation. And then it reminds me of the things that I'm so attracted to. And it's a, it's a very sexy game. If you really think about it. No, it it really, it really is. And I, it turned into that. We ended up having sex afterwards or whatever like that. And it wasn't even that wasn't even the intent. Like we weren't going into it like, Hey, let's see if this, we need to really reconnect. Right. We need, we need to re we need to rekindle our sex life. That wasn't the, the intention at all. It was a gift that someone given us. We were opening reading it, but I did connect that, that, whoa, this was something that I wouldn't have thought that would make that happen. But, you know, somebody like, and I don't know if Lindsay's been in a relationship for a really long time, but sometimes you just need to be reminded of the these qualities that you love or that you're very attracted to in your partner and nothing like great deep conversation that starts. Yeah. To and, you know, we yeah. should also we should That's talk cool. about libido killers, uh, okay. uh, lack of sleep. Lack of sleep is a major libido right, yeah, killer. Stress. Not just lack of sleep, but lack of quality sleep. Sometimes just fixing that alone uh, will change how you feel uh, sexually. The other one mm-hmm. is uh, the pill, uh, birth control pill. Now, mm-hmm. some women actually notice an increased libido when they're on the pill. And it, that, they believe, has to do more with the removal of stress of getting pregnant. So, oh, now I'm on the pill. I'm not worried about getting pregnant Mm. and that increases libido, but on a chemical and a hormonal level, it changes how women uh, react and respond to, to men in terms of like signs of testosterone or, you know, wanting to mate or whatever. They've done these studies now several times where they'll take women who are on birth control and they'll compare them to women who are not on birth control. And the women who are not on birth control, you can clearly, they can clearly see when women are ovulating or, or able to get pregnant when they're not based on the type of man they're attracted to. So what they do with these studies is fascinating is they'll take pictures of men and they'll mascul- masculinize the face. So same face, but then they make it look a little bit more masculine by adding like a little, maybe a heavier brow ridge or sharper jawline, yeah. a little bit of a beard or whatever, or look. they'll feminize it, you know, make the face look softer, uh, a little bit more feminine. When women are able to get pregnant, and if they're off the pill, they are attracted to more masculine-looking faces. They they want to mate with a stronger male or whatever. When women are on the pill, that changes, and a woman's preferences will change while she's on the pill too. So they've actually done studies and showed that when women meet their mate while they're on the pill and they get married and then they go off. Oh, I've heard of this. The divorce mm-hmm. rate goes up. <clears throat> yeah, it actually goes up because all of a sudden she's like, "I'm not attracted to this dude anymore." Yeah. Like, what's going on? You're not realizing that, you know, because it's subtle. What was the connection to that? It had something to do with when 
something to do with their hormones when it's being controlled like that by the that it changes their desire or want. The body for. thinks it's pregnant all the time when you're on the pill. Okay, so that's what what's is. going on. So she's looking for a provider, or so. So it's, you have this someone more of safe. A, yeah, you have a versus di- somebody she wants to mate. Uh, it's yeah, a, you know they've actually done studies and shown that when women who are not on the pill are in that kind of fertile stage, that they wear. They actually have a percentage. I can't remember what it was, but like fifteen percent. They have fifteen or twenty percent more skin showing when they go out. They move their hips so they actually numbered it like so much percentage more when they dance on the dance floor. <laughs> and these are all like uh, these are all cues and signs of high heels are worn more frequently. Advertising they, they can actually calculate uh, like a, a woman's ability to orgasm and, and where she is in her cycle by how her hips, how much her hips move. What when she dances or walks? Get the fuck out of here! Swear to God, I'm called BS on that. Right. <laughs> I'll find it. I'll find the study. We'll put it in the show. Notes. I feel like some girls throw that shit on purpose. You know. I'm saying that ain't like a natural thing. Some girls be working. There's that stuff shit. that's you on. See, there's a lot of stuff that's not on break, purpose. Break their ankles. They're trying to work it's it so both, hard. Though. There's a lot of stuff that's on purpose, and there's a lot of stuff that's just not on purpose. So, yeah. but yeah, get sleep. You know, reduce stress. Sit down, talk, and communicate. And then, if you want to talk about supplements, uh, evening primrose oil uh, for women has been shown to balance out hormones. Um, Yohimbi. Uh, has been uh, suggested that it actually helps women uh, with uh, you know feeling aroused as well. This also helps with men. The thing about men is if you give something to a man that improves his ability to get an erection, he will oftentimes feel more aroused as well because of the feedback. Like when a guy gets a boner, you know, he feels it and then automatically makes him feel like yeah, we're he's di- more aroused. We're different creatures than women. <laughs> With women, you know, it's a little more subtle, so they don't necessarily connect that physical arousal with the emotional, you know, mental arousal type of thing. That's why it's a little bit more complicated. Yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much it. We're, I, I mean, need a storyline. Yeah, because we're experts on this. Yeah, we totally are. <laughs> yeah. We're totally experts. And there's always this. pirates. I thought we did a pretty good direction. job of answering that question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, you've definitely had that with- If you DM us, Adam will send you a naked picture. That, yeah. That's <laughs> that, actually that helped many help. women. Right. With this could also up. kill your sex drive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Usually fixes it. Yeah. All right, next is Katie McGrady. You guys have talked about rebuilding metabolism several times, but I don't feel like I've gotten good advice about how. (laughs) I know I've done some serious metabolic damage to myself, and now I'm following your MAPS programming. Are there some kind of specific guidelines I should be following to fix my metabolism, or should I just keep eating healthy and I will eventually see changes? Unfortunately, if we were to say yes, then that would be a very generic answer because everybody is so unique and different. But this is also why... We could we created the intuitive guide because if we were to structure something or to give somebody a plan on how to rebuild their metabolism or to find how to get reconnected to their body signals, this would be the path that you would start. Yeah, one yeah. of the so here's two of the biggest challenges with and by the way, it's I hate the word metabolic damage. We use it and we understand what that means. Right. I don't necessarily like using it though because it's, well, it's your, not it's your metabolism accepted doing, in the medical community. Yeah. Still. Well, your metabolism is doing exactly what it's it should. If you diet too much, you overexercise a lot, your metabolism is adapting, you have lots of becoming stress. more efficient, and it's actually protecting you. Um, he, there's two big, big challenges with trying to get your metabolic rate to speed up. Because I think what she's talking about is, you know, she probably dieted a lot, overexercised. Now her metabolism is really slow. Yeah. And if she eats anything over, you know, 1,200 calories or whatever, she starts to gain weight. So she's trying to get it so that it burns more calories so that it becomes easier to stay lean. And you what know. are those first sort of steps she needs to take in that yeah. right direction? Here's, here's the, there's, there's, a, there's a couple big challenges with this. One is you're probably going to have to gain some weight. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a tough one for people because people in this state of mind uh, who overwork themselves and under eight probably don't have a good relationship with their body. And you tell one of these people, hey, look, in order for us to reverse out of this, you're gonna your body's gonna probably have to gain some weight mm-hmm. and some body fat. You might as well tell them to to cut their leg off or, you know, jump off of a bridge. That is a very difficult message it's a uh, hard pill to, to convey. Swallow, yeah. Very different message to convey. So convey, excuse me. So uh you're gonna probably have to gain a little bit of weight and let your body know, uh, you know, feel comfortable that it has some reserves. Mm-hmm. Um, you're doing the maps programming, which is good because you're focused now on building muscle which is key here, mm-hmm. absolute key. If you get stronger and if you build muscle, your metabolic rate is going to be is going to burn hotter. 
Mm. More muscle requires uh, more calories, and your you you know utilize glycogen and glucose more effectively. Your body becomes more sensitive to insulin, so it just becomes more efficient at uh, burning body fat. In terms of nutrition, very ba- you know very basic. You have to slowly increase your calories on a mm-hmm. very basic level. Now, what that means, you know, what those calories are made up of can vary pretty dramatically. I typically don't recommend anybody re- cut any macro too low uh, when they're doing something like this. So I don't typically recommend a keto, low carb style diet when somebody's coming out of like you know metabolic damage or HP axis dysfunction, or whatever, because we want insulin to rise a little bit. We I run an almost balanced. I run mostly, most clients that I deal with this, I run close to like a 30, 30, 30. Like the old zone or whatever. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I just, I find it works the best. Um, I mean, obviously there's benefits to having carbohydrates with this person, but I also know too that they could be insulin resistant. So you don't want to overdo it like a 50 or 60% carbohydrate diet. If you want numbers, I'll give you some generic numbers of, you know, protocols that I typically put on people. This is, again, it's going to range based on the person. Is I'm I'm only looking to increase their their calor their daily caloric intake you know week over week by about five to twenty percent right and twenty percent obviously would be we're seeing great results they're leaning out actually they're not putting any weight on right I'm only gradually inching you up five percent if I notice that your body's staying the same or even potentially like mm-hmm. Sal saying going up so I'm trying to increase you know your caloric intake by five percent daily. Uh, each week, like we're going to increase 5%, if that makes sense, right? And then I'm going to try and counter that by increasing your NEAT by about two to 4,000 steps every week, right? So I'm asking that person, okay, if this week we average 6,000 steps a day and you're eating 2,000 calories, next week I'm wanting you to try and eat about 2,200 calories and we're going to shoot for seven to 8,000 steps per day. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to create a little bit more movement to counter the additional calories that we're adding, but also get her metabolism used to consuming more calories. Now, again, those are rough and generic numbers, but for the most part, you know, that's what I'm kind of doing. And then I'm, I'm paying attention to the client and seeing, okay, obviously week over week, I'm not going to add five to 20%. If every week I see you putting on two to five pounds, two to five pounds, I'll have to slow it down. And some clients uh, I've seen take me almost a year to fix their metabolism. Some happen around six months. And then some of them after about a month of actually just getting their shit together, they actually start to respond really well. So it's really tough to say. I've noticed that with some clients, like it's really, it's just the recovery that was absent, you know, and even in the lifting process, people think that, you know, weight training, um, like as far as the rest periods are concerned, that gets like sort of uh, muddied up because of all, <laughs> trying to hustle through, you know, the workout and treat it l- much like a cardio session. Right, right. I, again, I didn't even address that. Right, part of the recommendation on programming would be something that models like a phase one of Maps Red. Like right. that's the type of lifting that I'm having you do. Good r- amount of rest periods. We're lifting heavier weight. That way, any extra calories that you consume or any weight that you put on, I'm hoping that some of that is being partitioned over to building muscle. So even though your scale may go up, like Sal saying, two to five or eight or even 10 pounds, I'm hoping a nice percentage of that is actually going to building building muscle on your body, which is internally going to help your metabolism. It's, it's a shift in, in mentality. So yeah. what, you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to go into this and think to yourself, I'm going to quote unquote repair my metabolism and get leaner. Like get that out of your head. What you need to think is I'm going to go in, I'm going to just going to focus on getting stronger. I'm going to increase my strength in the gym and I'm going to slowly be able to eat more calories and that's it. And then forget everything else because it will fuck with your head when you realize, oh, this isn't, this is taking longer than a month. It's taking me four months or five, wow, six months later and it's still taking me longer and I've gained five pounds on the scale. It will mess with your head, and what a lot of people do is they back out of it and go back to reducing their calories and think, okay, I think I repaired it enough, and uh, they end up doing more damage. It can take a while, especially if you were in that state of, uh, of you know damaging your metabolism for a long time. I mean, if, if you were a, a competitor and you competed in, co- you know, in, in competitions for years... I mean, Jason Phillips made a good point. Your CNS may remember that. Even though you do a year's worth of rebuilding, it could take you another year to get your CNFs to, to, to be okay with the fact that 
you're eating more now or you're going to be able to eat more now. So mm-hmm. give yourself, definitely give yourself some time. Don't cut anything too low. I always recommend people avoid foods that are, you know, like lots of processed foods and things that are, nece- you know, unhealthy. Gut health is, is important. Uh, it's pretty common to find people in this state that's with, uh, with gut uh, health issues as well. It's rare that I find someone like this without having gut problems. It's usually both. So repair your gut health because if your gut health is off, it's going to be very difficult to get your metabolism to speed up. Um, it's going to be hard to eat more calories and do all that stuff. But give yourself some time. Just focus on strength and slowly move your calories up and then watch what happens. Next question is from Harriet Edwards 410. Why does your body sometimes start to reject foods that you eat a lot of, even if they are healthy, nutritious foods such as nuts, blueberries, etc.? Did we just uh, cover this? Uh, maybe not just, but I we've talked we, about this. Yeah, no, we've talked about this before. In fact, I thought we were just mm-hmm. talking about this and saying more than likely, uh, you know, as you get, uh, if we if you do start to get autoimmune issues, more more often than not, it's something that you ate a lot of, regardless if it's healthy. It could be avocados, it could be blueberries, it could be tomatoes. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's, uh, you know, and you've explained this really well about, you know, if we, and I think as Americans, we're obviously seeing this more and more and it's on the rise of a, this overconsumption. If we're constantly oversaturating, overconsuming, and then you have any sort of a leaky gut syndrome at all, mm-hmm. you know, it, it could be avocados or blueberries that you eat a lot of, and then that leaks through and then gets into your bloodstream, and then your body thinks of it as an invader and says, okay, next time you eat that, I'm not going to be happy with right. it. Right, because yeah. in, uh, it's, so it's important to understand that it's not, the problem isn't that you're eating a lot of healthy foods. Yeah. The problem is you're eating a lot of the same foods yeah, the in, variety is in the context of inflammation. So if your body's inflamed, if your gut is inflamed, if the junctions between the you know the cells in your gut are open and food can pass through the gut that isn't supposed to or parts of food pass through the gut that aren't supposed to when they're not supposed to, then you're going to develop an immune reaction to these foods, which just so happen to be the ones you eat a lot of. So now you're in a position where I used to always have milk, never bothered me before. Now milk gives me problems or, you know, wheat now gives me problems or whatever. Now some foods tend to be more, uh, your body tends to develop uh, reactions to certain foods more than others for whatever reason. We're not quite sure why, but dairy, gluten, nuts, legumes, um, nightshade, you know, vegetables like tomatoes and and, uh, eggplants. Are on that list of foods that we tend that tend to be more immuno uh, immunologic. I you think see a little more frequently. You do. Egg whites is oh. another one. Um, lectins are found that your your body has a uh, you know has a tendency to want to develop more antibodies towards. In the context of inflammation, though, fuck, it could be anything. I, this this yeah. when I had my terrible gut issues and I did all these tests. Uh, eventually, when I was convinced to do so, I remember looking at the list and I was so befuddled like i looked at the list and i'm like i've been eating this forever i'm like these are fucking foods i eat all the time like spinach was on there right i'm like spinach whites yeah how the hell am i do i have an intolerance to spinach and it's because i had uh, you know leaky gut right it starts with that though right it starts with that inflammatory state that you you know your your gut gets into that state and now all of a sudden the the problems start to arise with you know some of these foods that are considered healthy that you've always ate now the good news is if you're finding that you're in the state of leaky gut and you know and lots of food intolerances if you avoid the foods that you have a reaction to completely Okay, this is the current protocol. I'm not saying this is going to change because uh, things tend to change in, in this this uh, at this state. This is a lot of new stuff. But so far, this is what seems to work. You completely avoid the foods that you have an intolerance to, heal your gut. Those antibodies uh, reduce, and then you can reintroduce it. You so. can reintroduce it, and you can you can cure many of your food intolerances. Sometimes you can't, but many of them you can. So yeah. like for me, I can eat peanuts again. I can eat egg whites again. Gluten, I have a uh, a mild to moderate intolerance to now, whereas before it was a severe intolerance to. Dairy's fucked. I can't t- I can't have dairy ever again. So that one's that one's gone. But I had to completely avoid them for like a year. I remember like 
if uh, if there was like breadcrumbs in my food, like the smallest amount, then I'd get this horrible reaction, and it was mm. so frustrating. But I had to completely avoid them, and and your body's you starts to reduce these, you know these uh, uh, you know IgG antibodies they're called um, to these types of food. So you're gonna have to identify the, these for yourself. There's a couple ways you can do this. Um, there are tests that you can take that will test uh, IgG antibodies. And that'll give you a good start. They're relatively expensive. I think like $500 on average. Um, the other thing is the, and the gold standard is an elimination diet where you remove all of your, you know, what you think may be giving you problems for 30 to 90 days. That's the pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, and then you reintroduce one at a time, one week at a time. So like, you know, okay, this week I've, I've been avoiding, you know, you know, whatever, dairy for, you know, two months. I'm going to introduce dairy this week and then you introduce dairy no reaction cool now next week i'm going to introduce this other food that i had avoided and you slowly do that because you want to know exactly uh what's causing the problem once you've identified that food intolerance it's recommended that you avoid it for a a year at at least so a year cut that food out and then see if you can reintroduce it later on and see what happens but if you're in a state of uh you know the kind of this this low level immune response. Um, this affects everything in your body. This affects your hormones. When you have this low level of inflammation in the body and this slow kind of immune you know reaction in the body, although you may think you feel okay, uh, cortisol is going to be a little higher because it's a it's a it's a reaction. It's a stress response, um, which will then affect your ability to burn body fat uh, and build muscle. Um, cravings may change. It may affect serotonin and dopamine. So your moods will start to change. Um, the, you know, lots of things will, are affected by this and they're, they gradually build over time to the point where what's that analogy where if you like put a, a frog in boiling water, it jumps out. But if you put a frog in like room temperature water and then slowly heat it up, it doesn't jump out and it eventually gets boiled. It boils to death because it, it doesn't recognize the slow, increases in temperature. Mm. I don't know how true that is, but I know it's a it's something that people will say where, you know, if you... Some Bayou proverb. <laughs> maybe. If, <laughs> I don't know. Where if... I'm not familiar with that If one. you, you know, over time, your Just body gets shit up over here. <laughs> worse and worse and worse over time, you don't recognize how shitty you feel because it's been the slow, gradual increase. And when you get yourself better, you start to notice like, oh shit, I was feeling kind of crappy. So mm. this is something that's real important. If you have foods that give you bloat or skin issues or constipation, diarrhea, belching, um, le- uh, you know, lethargy. These can all be signs of uh, a food intolerance, whether they be mild or moderate or severe. Uh, check this out. We are doing a 30-day workout on YouTube for free. So what this means is every single day, we're going to give you a new workout or mobility session or something on YouTube for the month of January, it's totally free. We're trying to help out as many people we as we possibly can back. this year for free. So make sure you guys tag a friend. Share this with somebody who's not working out right now. Get them yeah. started the right way. It's a free program programmed by Mind Pump on our YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV. Subscribe to the channel and make sure you set yourself up to get notifications so you get the workout as soon as we post it. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.